All right, so depending where you're at, we just need to orient ourselves a little bit. Um, if your screen looks something like mine, where it's got more of like a solid color top area and then these big buttons on the side, this should be the new Google Plus. If yours looks a little bit different, you should have a button that says try new Google Plus. Notice mine has back to classic Google Plus. I'm in the new Google Plus interface. Um, and on the left side, I see a variety of buttons. So we'll be looking at the anatomy of what, what do I do with this. Before we do that, though, we need to realize that we've got two ways that we can use Google Plus. One as a person or one as a business. So by default, most likely, you're going to get the person version of it, the Google Plus profile. We want the Google Plus page. So that's technically different. Profile and page. Even though they sound so interchangeable and we've used them interchangeably, technically a Google Plus profile is for personal and a Google Plus page is for business. Right now I'm on my personal profile because it's got my picture here, but here's what the problem often is. Unless you know about this, you might have created your your account here thinking you were creating it as a business but you still created it as a person so even if your name up here says the name of your business and your logo you might have a personal account the personal account has different buttons here once you've got the business page we'll have different buttons and different access so this again this will be something that we can figure out individually if you fall into this in, into this in, into this concept that you've got the wrong kind of account. I'm going to show you what we should do and if that was different than what you did we can fix it. But That'll be during the, the breaks and such. Um, what I want to do is go to the screen where I can manage my pages because as a personal account I can create and manage many business accounts. If you click, uh, let's try this as an exercise. On the very top right corner, you'll either have your picture or your logo or something, or maybe just a letter. If you click on that icon on the very top right corner, mine says, this is, I'm viewing my Google Plus profile, personal profile. And I'm listed here as various Google Plus pages that I manage. Because I can manage multiple business accounts I can set it up and we'll see how to add other managers to these pages. So my company, we work with various clients and we run their Google Plus and so forth. And the way we do it is that I've got my personal profile. I either, I either get access to or I create a Google business page. And then I just switch between my personal to the business and then I manage it. Um, that business page will not see anything of my personal. It won't be linked to it. It won't be visible. People won't know that Victor manages that page. So don't worry about that because people think I'm gonna go create a Google Plus page, put my business info into it, and I'm done. No, Google will by default create a personal profile. So I'm gonna show you then how you can have here multiple pages to work with. If you click on that icon on the top right, how many of you have listed Google Plus pages here? Just a couple of people. So for most of us, we need to create them. That's usually where most of us are at. I didn't know that. I didn't know that there was a difference. Well, now, now we'll know. And unfortunately, they after the new Google Plus update, they changed something here, which is really weird. This is another one of these speed bumps. Make sure you take notes on this. And I'm also putting it in the video. But now, in order for us to create both multiple pages, mine says all your Google Plus pages. How many of you see there that it says all your Google Plus pages? Raise your hand. The same people that had it before. Most of us not. So here's the annoying part. It used to be that there was a button for you to click here to go manage all your pages. If you've got multiple pages, then you'll have that button. If you don't have multiple pages, you won't have that button. You might think, okay, I'm going to add more accounts. I'll click that account. Don't click that account. This is not what you think. This is what I'm saying that this is annoying, but I, I have the solution. Yes? I only have one big miss on here, and it still shows all the pages. It says that I found all your Google Plus pages. Okay, good. Okay, okay. 
Students and not the same as all pages, right? If it says all pages, I believe it's the same. So we'll we'll see we'll see about that in just a moment. But here's what we need to do, especially if we've got the new Google Plus design. Here's what we need to do, and it's pretty annoying. I'm here. Whatever screen this looks like, you'll probably see a help button. Click that help button. That pops up with a with a help screen. All of these topics for help. Up on the search at the top, we're going to search for business page. Just type business page and press enter. So I'm here on Google Help. If you're anywhere else, this might not work. Go to Google Help and then type business page. Press enter. The first result should be Google Plus Pages and Google My Business. Click on that one. There'll be some info about what it is, but here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this link at the top here, Google My Business. I'm sure there's other ways to get to I'm sure there's other ways to get to it, but I found it this way through help. Oh, I see. You can also go directly to business.google.com. So if, if you're not quite on the same track as I am, it looks like you can go to business.google.com. Yes. Okay, just one moment. Um, let's click on that Google My Business. It should take you to some screen perhaps like this. Because I manage more than one page, they're all listed here. But if you don't have any pages, this is where we actually create. Um, so some of us see a screen that's somewhat like mine, where it shows some boxes. Some of you see a map. If you see the map, code, stay there. And there's the link right there on the Okay, so 
Again, uh, so I've been teaching this class for several semesters, and they've recently updated the um, interface, so that's what we have to do here. I think once we do this one time, we won't have to jump into that help screen anymore. After we do this at least one time, then we'll have the ability on the top right corner to switch between accounts, but I'll get to that in a moment. So some of you see a map, some of you see a listing of your pages. If you see a listing of your pages, uh, you'll have also a little plus button there. So if you don't see this, just wait a moment. If you see the map, just wait a moment. If you see a listing of your pages, you can add more brand pages right there. So if you have that button, click on it. If you don't have that button, what you'll see is a map. If you've got the map, it will look like got a map it'll look like a map so what you want to do then is if you're on the map on the very top left corner you've got the this little menu that appears and you've got all locations add location add brand page all brand pages the difference here is you can create a Google Plus business page for a business that has a physical location or one that doesn't Let's say you're a plumber and you don't have a store, but you go visit people at their location, at their house, at their employer. So you have to decide which of these two makes sense for you. Do I have a location on Main Street? Because you only want to create a business page with a location if it's a real location um, that people can go to. You can then instead, if you don't have a location, create a brand page that is not attached to a location. So you have to decide which of these to do, but I'm going to say probably, even if you have a physical location at the moment, don't do the add location at the moment because that's going to want to verify your location. What's to stop your competitor from creating a business page for you and putting crazy things onto it? This is what it is to stop it. They will verify. They want to call your business right now, automated, to, add, to have, uh, to have them uh, verify that you're a real business. If I've, got a, if I've got a business on Main Street and I put my phone number and everything, and then I go through this process and Google calls me, I have to be at my store. Your competitor is not at your store to answer the, the store phone. So that's how it protects you from someone claiming your location. We're not going to be able to do that, perhaps, because you're here. You're not at the store. You're not going to be able to coordinate when Google calls you to complete the verification process. So I'm going to say what we can do is we're going to create a brand page, and we can delete it later. I want us to create a brand page so that we know how it works, the anatomy of Google+, how it all works, and such, and then we can delete it. And when you get home to your business, you can actually do the location. Question. I just had a question. <clears throat> they used to do give you a pen number where they mail it to you in the yeah. mail. If, if, is that just for brand now? or Because I mean, it used to be an alternative to location. That's another way. I believe they still have that way. Another way to verify, they'll mail you something. So either a quick call or wait two weeks to get that in the mail. Mm -hmm, right. So whichever you'd like to do, but I'm still going to recommend, even if you do the mail method, I'm, I'm not going to go through that screen where I'm not going to answer that question because I'm going to not go to that screen. And it's for every individual person. So I'm still going to recommend, let's go to the brand page. We can delete it. It'll be for practice, and practice makes perfect. So we're all going to go to the brand page. And notice there is, a, there is a phone number here. It does work to call Google and get things answered. I've called them at midnight, and they've answered, and they got my question answered. So that's how you can get a hold of the faceless company Google. They've got a contact, but only if you've got a business page. Yes? Okay, along the same line, I don't want to be dead horse. But um, for you, when you have your business, you have businesses, and you create a page for those businesses, uh, if you do location, I mean, they would call the business and not you as the manager of the page, right? Exactly, they would call the business. So usually, because we do deal with businesses that have a location in San Diego, we're there at the business with the owner getting the step done, oh. just to get it done fastest. Because it's hard to coordinate on one phone calling the business while the phone is calling us and like that. So we usually do it in person with the business owner at that moment to make sure it's done. I'm sorry, but how do they adjust for if, if the business has just an answer? Most businesses 
have the VC. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't. If they call you and the answering machine picks it up, it picks it up. Mm -hmm. So you have to be there to answer it. Oh, or okay. you get or you get the uh, the the letter in the mail. Okay, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Business.google.com. So, open any tab or just one of Yeah, your current tab, just go to the address business.google.com. So, let's click Add a Brand Page. And here's this screen then to create the business page. Um, this is the confusing part because you can create a, an account simply from sign in or sign up but that's going to give you a personal account. This is how we create the business one. It asks for a page name. So let's say I have a company, Victor's Bakery. You can put any name you want here. I believe there is a character limit, but you can put capital letters and spaces and all of that because this name here is not the address of your Google Plus page. Remember when I showed google.com slash plus Mashable. This is not asking you for that. We, we get that elsewhere. So this is my page name and then it asks for a website. If you have a website, so you put in your website, victorsbakery.com. If you don't have a website, you don't have to add it. If you don't know your address, you can add it later on another screen. Type of page, product or brand, entertainment, community, other. Not a lot of choices to pick from, but whatever applies here, you can select it and you can change it later. So I'm going to just go with uh, product or brand, Victor's Bakery as a brand, sure. There's a terms of service. You can read. It's a bunch of pages as, as always, but it's basically saying how you will and won't use it. For example, you have the authority to access this. So if someone is trying to use this to impersonate you, they're, they're going against the rules, so then that's how you can get them off of Google Plus if they're impersonating you. Click on the little check mark to accept the terms and then click Create Page. So here's then another verification. This one doesn't necessarily need to be the phone number of the business. It's probably a phone number for right now. So I'm going to put my regular phone number right here, and I'm going to say, tell it to, yeah, send me a text message. Exactly. I haven't been called for them to try to sell me something. This is for verification, and um, I do it all the time, and I haven't had any trouble. No spaces? Or um, good question. I just wrote it like a regular phone number, and it worked. Yes? Oh, good. If it didn't, then then good. You just uh, wait a moment while I get past the screen. Question over here, too. Okay, one moment. Okay, so again, this is always a difficulty in teaching this because people have different screens, but eventually we all um, coalesce into the same one and, and then we're on track. But is everyone on track? Anyone need a little help? Is there something not quite working the same? If you get to some sort of screen that says, Welcome to Google My Business, there's going to be a tour here. I'm going to skip the tour, but it's telling you, here's, uh, you, use, you use this to build your brand presence on Google Search and Google+. Plus. So right there, Google search the largest search engine in the world, 60% global market share, hundreds of millions, if not billions of searches. 
go through Google. So if I've got a presence on Google this way, uh, through a page, and my competitor doesn't, that's how I'm going to be featured with a nice little graphic and star ratings and such, and my competitor is going to be a plain old link at the bottom that people will ignore. I will be able to grow and engage my audience with great content. It's marketing, it's advertising, because nowadays simply having the website is a minimum, a bare minimum. Uh, when everyone's got the bare minimum, we need a new minimum, and the new minimum is social media. One of the social networks, Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, um, etc., etc. So many networks out there. So if you use Google+, to create content, build an audience, a target audience, a captive audience, when you post something here, coupon this Saturday, use this to get 10% off, people will see it. Go buy your products, perhaps. Understand how customers find your brand and interact with you. Knowledge is power. And Google collects a lot of knowledge, a lot of information. And now we have access to it. Where are people visiting us from? What cities and states and times of day and what, which of our posts got the most likes? Because that'll tell me what more I can do. So that's why, in short, we want Google+, we want Facebook, we want Twitter, we want all those networks because it's, it's a way to uh, get traffic, grow your audience and such. And there's a whole tour here, but we're going to skip it, so just click uh, Skip Tour if, if you've got this sort of screen. And it might take you to a screen that looks something like this. At the very top right corner, it's got just the first initial of the company name. And now if you click on that icon on the top right, does it show you? For example, your personal account and your business account, Google Plus page. These are other pages. So now to switch between them, I just click that icon on the top right and switch between them. Because when you go home and you log into this again, it'll most likely take you directly to your personal account. And you'll say, well, where's, where's, where's all the things that I did earlier in class? Um, you, you have to get acclimated to switch back and forth between that icon on the top right corner. So if I click there to switch between it, just as an example, you don't have to do this, but as an example, here's all the ones I'm managing. This is the one I just created. Yes, unfortunately that happens very often, so the, the best answer really is, is that help screen, that uh, call them up. That's the best way to do it because it's going, they're going to be able to do these things behind the scenes to really fix it because for us to try to do it out here with buttons and such, I found it, I found it very difficult, so that's why they've got that help to actually call them, and they're 24 hours, available 24 hours. And, that, and that's something you could just explain as well. Exactly. Yeah. Now, let me get back to that screen that we were at, because again, this, okay, here we go. So, um, yeah, so we're on this screen here, there's that menu, there's, there's, okay, there's a lot to kind of digest about the anatomy of it, so we'll be looking at that and then how to use it. But at the very top right corner, we often should have this little three-line menu. You see this, they, they sometimes call it the hamburger menu, because it's got two buns and meat in the middle, the hamburger menu. So if you click on that menu at the top left, it should pop open to show you these various other screens that you can go to, and that's where you'll get that contact support right there. So it should be available oftentimes there. Uh, but being on this screen here, uh, this is where I can control my listing. And so I've got home, I've got insights, I've got a brand new page, so insights are empty, there's not enough data. 
this is what's going to tell me how many likes and plus ones I've gotten and traffic and my audience and all of that under insights. But I just created the page so I don't have anything to show for it. The more that I use this, the more data it will collect. On the home screen here, I've got a very basic listing that I want. But one of the first things I want to do is edit my page to complete it more because you're not going to entice followers to follow you with a very generic incomplete account. Uh, why would someone follow you if you still have the generic logo? You don't have a biography of the business. You don't have any posts. So the catch-22 of any social network, especially when you start off, is do I want to try to get followers first or do I want to post something to no followers? If I post something and I have no followers, in essence I'm talking to myself. I don't have any followers. No one is going to see this picture, this coupon, this ad. I don't have followers. Well, then you might say, okay, I'm going to go try to get followers. You're not going to entice followers when you have an empty account with no posts, no pictures, no nothing. So the catch-22 of that, which of those do you do? I recommend we're going to do first, complete the profile and post something to no one, so that then when we engage in the tactics of getting followers, we will have something to show for it. We will have something that will entice them to follow us. So that's what we'll do first. We will complete our account. Does everyone see an, a big red edit button right there? Go ahead and click that. Edit. Um, if, you, if it says meet the new Google, just click let's go. Yeah, they, the interface changed recently, so we're going to be stumbling along a little bit because they are not consistent. Okay. Um, added profile Okay, let's back up here. Uh, I don't know what yours went to, but just to make sure we're on the same page, on the top right corner again, click on your icon and click My Business. In the top right corner, you should see My Business. If it doesn't say My Business, you're probably in your personal account. Make sure you switch over to the business account. I'm going to try that again. Click that Edit. This time I'll say No Thanks. You said no thanks to yeah, let's do no thanks. Um, I think this way will be more what I'm looking for. So click a no thanks and then you get this screen where you can edit your profile photo, that is your logo. So instead of having your generic little icon there, you'll want to put your logo. I don't have my logo handy, it's back at my house. But what I want to do is add my logo here as soon as I can because I don't want to be the generic icon. I don't want to look like a spammer. The spammers don't take a lot of effort in crafting a real profile. So in order for us to get to entice people to follow us, we want to fill in as many of these things as possible. One is the logo, for example. Notice it is a, is a, it is a round circle. So if your logo is, is, is horizontal, if it's very wide, be advised it's going to get cut off and you won't see your full logo. You have to have a logo that fits in with this circle. Uh, you've also got a spot here. If you hover your mouse, change cover. This is just another bit of branding. Remember when we saw Mashable? They had that crazy graphic at the top uh, with technology graphics and such. So you want to change that graphic at, at some point, maybe a picture of some of your products or maybe a photo of the, your location or something. I don't have that picture handy, so I'll have to stick with that. Or there are other built-in pictures here, maybe this you know, maybe one of these pictures will work, but again, if you chose this, so did a thousand other people. You want to eventually upload a photo. 
and that's also going to be cropped to some degree. So I'm not going to change those two yet, but your homework is going to be that you want to edit those two graphics as soon as you can. That'll build trust in your brand. Yeah. Is there a way if you're going to create a custom photo like in Photoshop? Um, is there? How do you know the size of that? Can you go? I, I mean, like for photo, for Facebook, I can Google profile picture and and size of it, and they would give me the dimensions. Is there a thing where you can do this done? There is. I don't have the dimensions memorized, but you can definitely search it, just like how you're saying. Google Plus cover photo dimensions. Cover photo. Okay. Yeah. But any sort of rectangular photo, it'll still be resizable once you upload it, but if you want to upload it exactly the right size, you would have to look it up. Yeah, I noticed that some, I, for my personal one, it's a small photo, and it, it yeah. stretched it, and so it's pixel. Mm -hmm. We have these boxes here, people, under people, um, these are going to be your connections, your followers and such. I don't have any followers, so I'm going to leave that little box alone for the moment. But under story, do you see an edit button? Click edit there. We have a space for a tagline and an introduction. This says the 10 words that describe your page best. I don't like the way they write that because that's not really what they mean. They don't mean put in here 10 keywords. They don't mean that. They write one, they mean write one sentence that describes your, your business page. Your slogan, for example. If you've got a slogan or a tagline for your business, write it there. If you don't, this is a place for you to think about writing a tagline that will help you get found. So if I've got this bakery, my slogan might be um, family owned bakery in the heart of East Lake. That's there as a as a uh, as a tagline as a slogan about my company, but I'm also thinking about it in terms of how might people search if people are on a Google search or in Google Plus and they search for bakery in East Lake. I've got those couple of keywords in there. Bakery and East Lake. This can be edited as many times as I want, of course. This will be visible public to anyone on Google Plus or a Google search. <coughs> then we've got introduction. About a paragraph or so of text that you can write that describes your business. And again, thinking in terms of how might people search? What are these keywords that people might search for? You can do bold and italics and links and other cool stuff like that to format it a little bit better. So I might take a moment to say something like founded in 1991, Victor's Bakery is the premier, etc, etc, etc. We're not going to take a lot of time to time to do this right now, but this is one of the things that you'll need to do, again, for people to find you on Google and for people to trust you, to follow you. That can be set to public and some other formats. I'll explain those formats a little later, but usually everything that you're doing on this business page will be public. On your personal one, you can keep it to these other levels of privacy, of course, but for business, you want to be as public as possible to be found, to get traffic, to make sales, or whatever it is you're trying to do online. So I'll keep that as public. You can come back to this. This is obviously my te <coughs> testing account, so I'm not too worried. I'm going to click Save. We've got then a box of contact information edit that and here I would recommend fill in as much as you can about this phone number email fax pager address whatever you want to fill out the purpose of this is to get contacted this has the ability also to be public or these other sorts of settings for example your circles let's say you've got a home business and you and you add your phone number Yes, your phone number, if you leave it on public, your home phone number could be in Google Plus with hundreds of millions of users. People can find it, and then, of course, people can call you. Well, if instead you change this contact info to be your circles, what this does is 
it will only show the um, this contact information to those that you've allowed to see it. We're going to talk about what is this concept of circles. Basically, it's followers. We're letting our contact information be visible only to our followers. That might be better for you, because as you allowed a follower, then they can see your phone number or your home address or whatever business address. So you can decide here. You might want to select your circles because that first requires that you've connected with a person on Google Plus for them to see it. that. We've got something called communities, which <clears throat> are very, very useful, but we'll talk about them later in more in-depth. And then uh, we've got a section of links. If you click on edit links, I've added my website address, and then you've got more that you can add here. Add a custom link. So all you have to do here is put in a label and an address. So you can put also your Facebook here. That's fine cross-pollinate. Facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. You can put anything you want here. Think outside the box. What if I put here exclusive Google Plus content? My address like this. This concept here is known as a landing page. It's a web it's a page on my website where I direct traffic to from a source. Landing pages usually are not part of the main menu of the website. Like the college's website over here, we've got these main menu items, a bunch of links. There are pages on the college's homepage that are not accessible through any means necessary except let's say through Facebook, through an email campaign, through a flyer with a QR code. You scan that code, it takes you to a page not listed through normal means. That's a landing page basically. So here I'm directing people. Those of us, those of the followers that, that follow on Google+, we're giving them exclusive content. That could be an enticement to follow us on Google+. Plus, Because, as I said, people are, are, because of the momentum, people are comfortable and they use Facebook and it's hard to break out of that and use other networks unless you entice them. So if I've got here that link, and I can add as many of these as I want. This, of course, requires a bunch of setup that I don't have time to go into but you've got some page on your website that you're directing them from Google Plus, landing page. Save that. Now when someone visits your profile and sees that, there's that link that you can only get through, get to through Google Plus. We've got link your website. If you click on that, it's going to ask you to do um, this process of linking your website through Google Webmaster Tools. We'll talk about Webmaster Tools another day, but this basically is how you get that little verification icon. Because again, any person can create any account, but if you've got yours verified, if you've got a link from your Google Plus page to your website, and it's verified with that little check mark that uh, gives people more trust that it's actually you. So what we'll do is we're going to take our first break so I can give you a moment to maybe write a few of these things down here and then when we come back we're going to further look at the different screens and what's the stream and what are collections and then ultimately how do we use Google Plus most effectively. So it's about 11 
Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 11.10, and we'll go on.